Hello and welcome to Cheeky Tech. Um, in this video, I'm just going to cover briefly um, DCC systems, and this basically covers the Gauge Master Prodigy Express, and they call it the DCC One. Um, so let's cut to the chase. Uh, let me explain to you why I went for DCC as opposed to DC. Now my layouts that I had many years ago were DC and I had two controllers and obviously you can you make your track that you isolate between the different uh, sections so you, one controller runs one and the other controller runs the other and then you can switch over with points wherever. That's a great system it works really well it can get over complicated. Um, I found that I really would like to do DCC but I was too scared to use it and this is purely what I'm telling you in this video today it's really not that scary it is really a fantastic tool and it makes playing trains or using trains or displays uh, however we use them a lot more fun um, I came across Brian Lambert who is a has a website on DCC controller and wiring uh, DC wiring it, it, he covers a whole field of um, all that of that kind of stuff and it is absolutely what you don't know um, please do search this man's website uh, it is absolutely a knowledge of DCC and electrics it really is um, and that's what persuaded me to jump this way into DCC so without waffling on too much why did I go for the Prodigy Express now this is like the um, bottom end of the market so it's very cheap um, it's good quality, but it's actually a cheap price. So let me do explain that. Um, it's what they, I think it's an entry level. Um, so they do the Prodigy Express, or you can go for the Prodigy Advanced, and that's there. You see, I think it's called the Advanced Two. Now, exactly the same systems. They're both intercompatible. I can literally take this off there and plug. This is the Prodigy Advanced. Plug that into there, and that works. And then if I dialed up Loco four two eight, press Enter. It will flash because it's already programmed on there, but I can move it again on this system. So both controllers are compatible on all work. You see it's flashing now because it knows it's on two systems. But this thing gives me flexibility to run a train here, send it round, catch it on this controller, shunt it out and park it. Two people can play trains, send and play. So it really is that simple. I can just take that out of there um, and then plug it back in again. So these controllers are completely universal. Like all the Gauge Master uh, Prodigy systems, they're all interchangeable in every single way. Obviously, the entry level on this gives you a very small power pack, which is about about three amps. Um, it's enough to run. I can run five or six trains, but no problem. I don't bomb them around at full pelt. I run them very low power because I like the prototypical sounds and um, speeds of everything. So I like it all nice and slow. So for me, I can run this quite easily um, at that pace. Now if I wanted to run say 20 locos, 15 to 20 locos, I could keep this system and I'm going to delete this one because uh, it knows it's on, not on there so let's reset it all. Um, there we go, it's not flashing now. So I can, I can keep this system, I can upgrade um, a booster unit to this and that would give me 8 amps power to the track. So I can still use this system, 8 amp booster, it's about £160, something like that. And then I have 8 amps going through the layout, which will control, say, a good 15 or trains or so. So you're going from a small layout to a medium layout, and then you progress however you want to take it. Um, the Advanced 2, again, you could go and buy that system, and that would give you that same option. I think that runs about 5 amps five or six amps, so that's what they class as a middle entry. Um, and But then this would control all your points and accessories, which this one doesn't, it just basically runs your trains. And for me, as you guys know, if we don't know, I have all my points on a separate unit, um, so I manually change them, they're all wired into a, a, a manual CDU, um, so I don't need to control them on this. If I was going for Wi-Fi, um, that would maybe be something I would have to look into um, but as opposed to that's not something I, I chose to go down I'm very happy the way that my layout is set out so for me the advanced um, the project Express sorry is a fantastic system if I could afford it I would go for the advanced 2 back in the day um, 
but knowing that I can actually upgrade this to with a booster unit, I don't feel left out. I still keep these, I can still use these. These will work wherever I change in the future. Um, they're just interchangeable cabs that are, uh, uh, but the standards of DCC, they're all compatible. Um, it's under, I think it's the MRC uh, certification, which these actually originate from. Uh, so it is really easy. So is again, we've got our controller. All I've got to do is I'll plug it in. So you, you select your loco. Now I always call mine the last three digits of the train. And to program, you just four, two, eight, and bang, there we go, it's ready to go. And then you can make it move up and down. Now that's fine if you've decoded it and got the train all ready to go, and it's up and running. That's what you do, you basically select another train and we can get it moving. And a horn on cue. <laughs> I can move it backwards, and I've got a little option there, putting the lights on. It's got a little light button there. Stop is the red button. Everything is very explanatory, as you can see on these. They're both the same, okay? This one has a few different features. This gives you a run time. So on the advanced two, I can have um, a timer on it. So I can, I can run a train for like three hours, but as opposed to being scale to time, it would actually work it out for you. It goes sort of a little timer on it. So that's quite a good little feature on there. Never used it, um, whereas this one doesn't have it. This is very basic. But what it does do, it lets you program, read the chips, uh, change the CV settings, you can do all that through these controllers. So what I'm going to do now is actually going to change the address of this loco. Uh, we'll set it back to three and then I'll show you some of the settings to change the speed and momentum on the loco. So let's bring the camera down and see how we do it. Right, so we have our loco down on the program track, which is this track here. And this is very important. I always put my loco down here to program it. I do not do it up on the main layout up there. Um, it's okay if you've got one train on the whole layout and that's the one you want to program. But if you're like me, you've got a couple of trains on there, by changing the decoder and here could interfere, well, on the main track could interfere with the other train. So it's always best to do it on a separate piece of track, which is what I'm doing there. Right, so let's go into the settings. So to read, uh, we have different three different options, program track, main track, which is the main layout, and then we have read, and that is the read, and that should be uh, 03, because I've reset it. So it's now reading what the chip is, so it's not doing any damage at all, and you can see that's its default of number three. So let's go into program that, so we go into program track, program track, that's the one down there, and not the main, main is the main layout. It's the easiest way to remember it, and I actually write on their program track. It's a very good reminder. So, press enter, and it comes up with an address. So we're going to give it uh, a new address, which we're going to give it its current address, because I've reset it, so I can show you this. So, 428, and that's the loco number there, and I'll press enter. It's now going to register it and it says starting voltage. This is very important. You can see this is my little quick reference guide. So starting voltage is CV2, and uh, accelerate, accelerate is CV3, deceleration is CV4, and then you've got top voltage and mid voltage, and I'll explain to you a little bit about that in a second. So that's just my quick guide. Ignore that, that is uh, something that I keep just to give me a guide, um, however, whatever chips I'm using. Um, based on the 255 setting, that's um, just to give me an idea that I've got that range. So when you want to program with chips, do refer back to your chip manufacturer's guide. And this has all the recommended things on there, or the, the default settings, and use them as a baseline. And it tells you at the side there what you can increase to. That one there is a default of 3, but you can go up to 255. That's the allowable range on the acceleration. So what we'll do is we'll do two settings, one low, one high, and give you an idea of what they do. So primary address, we've done that, starting voltage. So we'll put in nine on this one, nine, and press enter. Now acceleration, uh, we want it to go, uh, set some more realistic. So if I put in the default is three, enter. So this is what you'd get the chip and then we put three on deceleration 
and then I'm not going to bother top fault, so just ignore that. I'm not going to change any of the CB values, so just ignore that. That's it. That is now programmed to pure default, really. So let's put it on track, and I'll show you what it does. And then we'll bring it down, we'll change it for a heavier load, and you'll see the difference. And you'll understand why it's important to change your decoder settings. So bear with me a second. We now have our loco on the track. So uh, we'll just program it in the controller. So we now need to do loco four, two, eight, press enter. And it's going the wrong way. So we need to do that way. It does help if it's on the track, as that. That's it, yeah. So there we go. So, right. so there we go. And that's, you can see it's quite fast. As soon as I'm pressing go, it's quite responsive. And it's not very prototypical, um, but it, it works as it sh is intended, okay? So we're gonna fine tune that to give us a slow start and all the rest of it. So, uh, so I'm just gonna bring that back round. Okay. Right, so what we'll do now, um, so we'll put it back down on the track. Right, so we've got our train back on the track and we're gonna reset it now. So I'm gonna do it to three, so we'll do a reset and then I'm gonna change it again. So program, program track, um, I'm gonna go skip all these bits and I'm gonna reset the um, default. Eight is reset on this, so just skip all this and go straight to CV, right? That's what you can do, it doesn't change any of the values. Press eight and then you press enter there and then press eight, this is the data. So you've selected CV, CV8 and then data eight. And it says there data, so it tells you what you're doing. Press that, and that's now completely reset that chip back to number three. So as soon as I go to program and we go to read, press enter, that's now gonna read the chip and it should say number three. And if you remember, we changed it to 428. There you go, and that's completely factory reset to as it should be. So what I'm gonna do now, is going to show you how to program it um, to be more prototypical of speed and uh, as if it's got a weight on it. So we go to um, program, program track down there, as we do, press enter, and we go four, two, eight, because that's the number of our train again. And then we're going to do, we're going to do a starting voltage of uh, six on this one, so I'm changing it a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to do accelerate we're going to do so we've got 255 is the allowance so if we do if i do uh say we do 75 accelerate and then decelerate i'm going to double it by 150 okay and that means it will take longer to slow down all right i'm going to ignore that because we don't, don't want to do any of the top voltage right so i'm going to put the loco back on the track and uh, we're going to see, we'll just check that is all done. So we've just go to read, press read, press enter, and it's going to show me what train should say 428. It is really this simple to change. And again, I, I was scared of CVs. There you go, 428. It takes a little while to read it sometimes. So let's just put it back up on, we've got on this little bit of track here now. Right, so I've put the loco back on the track and... Um, going to come out of here um, now I've just pressed start on this and you can see I'm knocking it up quite quickly and it's taking quite a while to me now that is very prototypical and if I just slow that right down knock it down all the way that's on zero and that's on zero see that's the the decelerate speed and you can see the loco is still going and I've got it on zero and that's what you want it to do so it takes if you imagine that being weighing 50 tonnes and suddenly you slam the brakes on, it's going to take nearly half a mile of track to sort of slow down and stop. And you can see it's still crawling along now. I've stopped it. So once that's stopped, um, we'll give it a reverse. And then we'll give it a speed. Here we go, lights on. So I'm going to give it a good old bit of speed. You can see it's taken a long time to crawl up. And then I'm just going to knock that speed right down, eight seven six five four three two one, and you'll see she'll just go st streaming past. So it's like slamming the brakes on, and that weight of that loco is still pulling. That gives you your prototypical balance um, 
with weight ratio to this scale of a model. So that's that's what changing the CVs does and how it actually makes a difference for you guys. You can see it still going now, it's completely turned off. Um, it is. It makes such a difference. If I now do forwards, and again I've just knocked it up 10, now instead of it racing off, it's doing its slow tiny crawl, and it's going to just slowly disappear down the track. So I hope this really gives you an insight how important it is to change your CVs. Don't be scared of doing it, and um, it really does make a difference and give you that amazing um, prototypical feel to your locos and um, seeing them run around. But if you imagine a load of coaches or wagons on there and you slam the brakes on and that's going to keep going until it gets to the station. And it, it does, it makes absolutely more fun. So this is why I do it and this is why I want to show you guys how easy it is to do. So there we go, that is DCC and it's my easy guide how we do it. I'm going to switch that off now and that will still be rattling past. That's uh, the, the computer taking hold of the, the decoder inside and telling it to slow down in small increments and you can just hear it easing off bit by bit so that chip is doing exactly as we programmed and that's that is the beauty of DCC and I think we all forget that we put the chip in and we run it around and we can control trains but you can change these CV values and the system like this really is easy so uh, fair play and that's the reason why I use it um, I'm not on commission um, but it's just I like practical and easy and this certainly is practical and easy for me and that's that's how I want it to be but I was scared DC uh, DCC many years ago until I, I read up on it and um, read some reviews on these systems unfortunately there was no guys like me doing a review so I had to find my own way um, but I certainly certainly have dived in and I certainly love this system um, if I have any problems I know that I can upgrade at any moment and add these systems to my new system so that's the versatility of it anyway guys that's all I've got on DCC if you guys have got any questions please leave them in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you as quick as I can and um, if any help or advice that I can share or give to you I'll be happy to pass on um, some of the other guys I know are doing some reviews on um, uh, DCC controllers and other controllers um, so if you're interested Again, look in the description below and there'll be links to their sites uh, on some of their systems. So this will be a shared knowledge uh, of DCC compatible systems. Anyway, take care and I shall catch you all very soon. It's still going. But